I'm here is after a while. Uh, no, it's been a long time. Part of it can go by the age of some of the children here. Give you an idea how long it's been, but uh, it's good to be here. It's good to see familiar faces. It's good to see Chuck and Jody. I haven't seen. I don't know when the last time we saw each other. But uh, and I was trying to tell Paul and Rebecca how long it is we've known each other, and I couldn't remember that either. <laughs> so. I don't know exactly what that says or what that means, but, but it's good to see everybody here today and I'm going to give a report of the, the work that my wife and I are doing. Of course, a lot of the work I do uh, because it's in Mandarin Chinese. Uh, my wife is Indonesian. She's, she speaks Indonesian, a bunch of Indonesian dialects and speaks English, but she does not speak Mandarin. And so she's not involved in that part of the work, but uh, she's uh, going with me and She'll sit there during a Chinese service and, you know, just act like she knows what's going on, <laughs> even though sometimes she doesn't. And so, but I'm thankful that she's with, with me today and we're thankful that we were able to finally get her visa so she could come to the States uh, to visit with brethren here in the country. Appreciate uh, this congregation, the work that's done through the years and uh, appreciate uh, Paul and Rebecca opening their home to us and, giving us a place to stay this weekend so that we could be here and have a part in this effort today. Uh, let's get started by pointing out that the work that I do is now under the oversight of the Church, Church of Christ in Church, Church Texas. This is a suburb of San Antonio. And uh, for a number of years, uh, our work was <clears throat> in Georgia. We were under the oversight in Duluth and then in Chestnut Mountain, which is uh, in Hall County nearby uh, where Duluth was. And uh, I was in Georgia for 22 years as I did the work that I was doing there. But now the, the brethren, the elders at Shirts oversee the work that we're doing. Again, most of the work that I do and the work that I've done over the past 42 years has been in Southeast Asia. Uh, I lived in Taiwan for 10 years. That's where I learned the Mandarin. Somebody wanted me to speak Mandarin this morning, but he didn't tell me what to say. And so, uh, So I said, I'm happy to be here today to be able to preach the gospel to you. And I hope the lesson that I present later today will be helpful to you. And, uh, your spiritual growth. So I do a lot of work in Chinese and I'll be talking about that. You can see, you can't see very well on the map because it's a small map. Uh, Taiwan is just off the coast of mainland China and I was there from 1982 to 1992 learning the language and working with uh, people there to be able to help establish congregations. And I go back on a regular basis. I, men I mentioned uh, to brethren that COVID was awful in, in the world, but in a way, it was a blessing to me because it has opened doors through the internet. So now every Sunday, uh, I'm meeting with the church in Taichung, in Taiwan, through the internet. And every first Sunday of the month, uh, I'm preaching uh, for the congregation there. And it's being broadcast over the internet to people uh, who are in Taiwan and, and others that live other places. Uh, and I'll talk about other things that I do in regard to that as we go along this morning. Uh, you see mainland China coming down. Uh, you see the green, that's Malaysia, and the tip of Malaysia is Singapore. And uh, those are some of the areas where I do a lot of the work that I do. Uh, I do some fill-in preaching at shirts when Brother Stan Crowley's not there. Uh, also, uh, I do my teaching online, uh, now from Texas. Uh, and. Sometimes when I travel, I do it online from where I'm staying. Uh, when we leave the United States, we go back to Indonesia. My wife has a house in, in, uh, in uh, Sumatra. And so we go back to Sumatra. And our base is in uh, Indonesia while we're working, uh, still working with the Brethren of Southeast Asia. So whether I'm in America or whether I'm in Indonesia, uh, I'm able to get online and work uh, with the brethren in the various countries, in the various uh, languages, especially English and Chinese. And of course, Russ understands all this about uh, online classes because of OABS. And so we're able to do a lot in that regard. This is uh, uh, the airport 
uh, in Lampong, which is about, uh, you may not know much about Indonesia, but the capital is Jakarta, and uh, so it's about 25 minutes flight uh, west of Jakarta. Here's an example of some of the online teaching that I do. Uh, this is a <coughs> Wednesday night class that is conducted from the Subang Jaya Church of Christ in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And normally I teach once a month in this class. Uh, it's a very unique format, I like it. You have, a, you have songs and you have a prayer, then you have a lesson that runs uh, 40 to 45 minutes, and then after that you have 40 to 45 minutes of questions and answers. And so those who are attending the class via Zoom uh, are able then to uh, ask uh, questions in regard to the lesson and we're able to have a back and forth in that regard. So, so this is uh, something that I'm doing on a regular basis uh, every Wednesday. While I'm here, it's Wednesday morning, 6 a.m. So I gotta get up and be ready at 6 a.m. for this class that meets at 8 p.m. in Malaysia. Now, when we're in Indonesia, it's not too bad. It's just an hour earlier. So it's 7 p.m., easier to, to get together. Also, I'm teaching now in the Four Seas College uh, Chinese department and every Monday uh, when school is in session we have chapel and so this is a picture of some who are getting together for chapel some of these windows are not open because uh, we have students from mainland China and uh, they're not wanting to readily make their face available uh, that might get them in trouble also sometimes people's bandwidth with is not very good. So if they open the window, they're not able to keep their connection. And so sometimes they keep their windows closed to be able to keep the connection. These are uh, some of the students and some of our teachers that are uh, involved in our Four Seas College Chinese department. I'm currently not teaching uh, this quarter, but I will be teaching beginning in April. And uh, my topic will be the uh, leadership in the church. What I'll show you how I do that as we go along here. Uh, here's the Taichung Bible study and worship that takes place every Sunday. Now, because I'm in the States right now, for me, this is Saturday night. And so Saturday night from 7.30 to 9.30, I'm meeting with the church in Taichung. And this is a picture of some of those that are involved. There are They are still just now uh, getting around to being able to go out in public again uh, for worship in, tai in Taiwan, and there's still a mask mandate for public places. So they're still wearing masks uh, most of the time uh, when they uh, meet together. Here's another example of a Wednesday night class at Subang Jaya in Malaysia. Now we had the privilege to travel to Malaysia and Singapore in November and December of last year, uh, we went first to uh, we went first to Malaysia. I had to think about that for a minute because normally we go to Singapore first, then Malaysia. But we went first to Malaysia and worked with a couple of the congregations there. This is a Heliang and Kalina uh, that are members at the Section 17 Church in Kuala Lumpur, and they are involved primarily in the English worship. They have an English congregation and a Chinese congregation. So we met, this is just down the street from the church building, and we just incidentally met there uh, for lunch the first day that we were there. We also worked with the Subang Jaya congregation. This is a Charlie Chan. Uh, Charlie Chan is a longtime member of the Subang church. Uh, his brother Stephen, before passing away last year, was one of the elders at the Klang Church of Christ in Kuala Lumpur. But here we're having a meal with one of his friends who had just recently come back from Australia. We tried to get with as many members as we could while we were there. Sometimes it surrounded a meal. Uh, this is Jason and his wife. Uh, they are part of the Chinese congregation at Subang Jaya and her father, William China. Now, I've known William for a long time. Uh, he used to live over on the east side of West Malaysia, but because of his health now, he's living with his daughter. So we had an opportunity to meet with them for lunch uh, during the week that we were there. This is another couple, Brother Edward Lau and his wife, Josephine. And Josephine is Hoi Fun's sister. 
just so you know who that is. Some of you know it, know Peter Chin and his wife Koi Fun from Singapore. And so we went out to one of the restaurants before services to uh, have a meal together. Uh, this is the Subang Jaya congregation. So while I was there, I spoke on Friday night uh, for the English group and then also Sunday morning uh, also for the English congregation. Uh, this is a number of those that attended on the 13th day of November as they turned the numbers around in Asia. And so we met on the 13th uh, for Bible study worship, actually worship and Bible study. And this was in English. Again, after services, we had an opportunity to have lunch with some of the members. On the far left is Brother Leachy Team. Brother Leachy Team is a retired uh, lawyer, attorney, worked for the government for a number of years. Uh, now he has been rehired by the government to work in a, another position. But he and his wife, his wife is sitting to the left of my wife, uh, to her, my wife's left, uh, Vilan, and uh, they uh, do a lot of traveling around in Malaysia, but they were at Subang Jaya on this day. Uh, Danny Ung, who is between uh, Chi Team and me on the left, and then uh, Timothy Ting on the far right uh, is sitting there, and Danny Ung's wife uh, next to him. Timothy Ting is from Ipo, which is on up a little bit north in Malaysia, but after he graduated from university, he moved down to the Kuala Lumpur area and is now working with the uh, Subang Jaya congregation. I mentioned to Rebecca last night, we went to uh, the Bo Plantation, which is located in Malaysia. Uh, Bo has, they make tea, so they grow tea. And so I wanted my wife to go and see it because this is the tea that I drink when I'm overseas. Uh, I drink it here if I'm drinking hot tea. I drink bow tea. And uh, this is a picture of some of the uh, plantation. This is just a small segment of the tea plantation there that I think began in 1929. So it's been around a long time. And uh, my wife tells me after we go there, Oh, we got tea plantations in Indonesia a lot bigger than this. <laughs> and so, well, I haven't had a chance to, to go to those places, so hopefully someday I'll get to go. But we, uh, Brother Kamwa from Section 17, uh, took us up to Cameron Highlands, which is uh, in northern Malaysia, and we were able to see that. While we're in Malaysia, my wife and I were able to celebrate our fourth anniversary. And if you haven't met my wife yet, she's here in the near the front. Uh, Etta is her English name. Uh, the, she had, Indonesians have a lot of names, so I won't go with all the different names that they use. But anyway, you can call her Etta and she will respond to that. Uh, if you want to call her by her Chinese name, Gu Mei Li, so you can call her that and she will also answer to that because she knows that name. Uh, some of the brethren from the Section 17 Chinese congregation uh, had a dinner for us. Uh, to celebrate our anniversary and so here's a picture of us at the dinner and then my wife likes to sing karaoke and so uh, here she is on the right uh, singing karaoke with the man who was uh, performing that night what they do in indonesia you know we don't have a lot of this in the states i don't think i know we might have karaoke around there um, over there they have they have singers in all the restaurants at night and so what you can do if you want to sing you just go up and tell them you want to sing and they'll give you the microphone and you can sing one song or two or three songs or whatever. And uh, they don't mind doing that. So my wife was doing that on that occasion. Uh, on the top left is uh, Mao Hui, who is the Chinese preacher at Section 17. He also conducts a Chinese class at uh, Subang Jaya on Tuesday night. And I also take part in that class online. On the far right at the back is Michael Leong. Michael is also involved now with the Chinese congregation at Section 17 in Malaysia. Michael was my first contact back in 1999 when I began to make regular trips to Malaysia and we continue to be uh, in contact on a regular basis. His wife, June, is standing just to his right. And then in the front of the yellow blouse, the yellow shirt is their daughter, Hannah. And uh, Hannah is, uh, she's really smart. She speaks English. Mandarin, Cantonese, and Malaysian. And she's 11. And so that's pretty good. And so they, they work hard on languages overseas. You know, uh, in our country, you all, you all know uh, 
someone who speaks three languages is trilingual, and someone who speaks two languages is bilingual, and someone who speaks one language is an American. So, you know, that, that's not true in every case, but true in a lot of cases. And then Mal Blake's wife is in front in the blue. On the right is Ivy. Ivy is uh, involved in the English congregation in section 17, but also attends our four C's Chinese department classes online. Here's a picture of the section 17 English worship when we were there in November. Peter Bang, who's one of the members there, uh, is leading the singing on this occasion. Here's uh, those who attended on this particular day to the English worship, which is in the morning at section 17 in Malaysia. We had lunch with Peter Bang and his wife, Michelle, she's in the front on the right, and then Edwin uh, Chine and his wife, uh, uh, Alicia, uh, sitting on the left. Uh, we just went to a, a mall food court for our lunch, and uh, we've known these folks for a long time. Uh, here's Edda sitting with Janet Leong. Janet Leong is uh, Kamwa's wife. I know you don't know them, but some of you know their children. Uh, Sandra, uh, uh, Sandra Leong, who is now married to Willie Ling, who is Peter and Hui Fun's son. Uh, they're married and living in Malaysia, and they now have a little girl. And then Kilian's wife, Kalina, you've seen her already this morning. This is in the back of the church building. Here's a number of those who attended the Chinese service that evening when I was there at Section 17 in Malaysia. Now, if I'm going along, if you have a question, just pop your hand up, okay? And we'll, be, we'll stop and, and talk about whatever you want to talk about in regard to what, what we're seeing here. Now, I miss the food when I'm here. Uh, there's certain foods in Malaysia that I really miss that you really can't get here. And one is uh, called roti tamur bawa, which translating is bread with egg and onion. And what they do is they, they spread the, the bread out. It's like a, really like a big pancake or like a, a, a tortilla. And then they put the egg and the onion in the middle and then they mix it up and, and it ends up, the egg and the onion ends up being inside the bread. It's really good. That's one, that's my favorite. And then the other, you can get here probably once in a while, is saute. A saute is basically meat on a stick. And so uh, we can get that uh, in Malaysia. And also, of course, we can get uh, the saute in, in Indonesia. So here at this restaurant, 24 hours a day in Malaysia, at least there are some restaurants, you can get this food. Basically, uh, the, the bread and the egg and the onion is a breakfast food, and the saute is a dinner food. You can't get saute for lunch, for example. They don't fix it for lunch. They wait to the evening time. Well, when we finished in Malaysia, we headed for Singapore. It just so happens this year, or this last year, we flew Singapore Airlines uh, from Malaysia to Singapore. I think it's about a 40 minute flight. It's not very far, uh, but uh, it, it beats five hours on the bus. And so we were able to fly down to Singapore. And as soon as we got there on the very day that we arrived, we were able to meet with some of those that are involved in the Four Seas College Chinese Department. I'll start on the far right. This is Anna and John Chan. John is a university professor in Singapore, and he is also one of the elders of the Jerome Church of Christ in Singapore. And Anna is the secretary for the Chinese Department of Four Seas College. The elders oversee both the English and the Chinese departments of Four Seas College, and John is one of those elders. Now next to John is uh, Jedediah Yuan, Yuan Shu Jie. And Jedediah is from mainland China. After being converted in China, he came to Singapore and studied at Four Seas. Uh, his wife's not in this picture. Uh, I think she'll be in a later picture. But his wife is from Taiwan. I've known her since she was like two years old. And uh, she grew up got her degree in physical education in, in Taiwan, and then she went to Four Seas uh, to study, and they met there and got married. And so now they have four children, and he is the full-time preacher for the Chinese congregation that meets at Jerome in Singapore. He's also one of our full-time teachers in the Four Seas College Chinese department. Uh, I, I mentioned that 
several times now, I, I might mention that we have 12 full-time uh, Chinese students, and most of them are from mainland China. Uh, all of the classes are conducted in Mandarin Chinese. And so in the past, we've had Chinese students come to Singapore and study in Four Seas College, but they had to know English in order to do that. And that had prevented a lot of people to come to the school because they could not speak English. And so there had been a desire for many years by some of the brethren in Singapore and Malaysia to start a school that is completely conducted in Mandarin Chinese so that we are able to include these students. Well, COVID, again, uh, put a big dent in the efforts that we were making there because the plan was originally to, to bring all the students to Singapore in person for classes, but because of COVID, we were not able to do that. So instead, we set up the Zoom classes and we have three or four uh, students from China who are actually in Singapore studying the, the lessons, but the majority of our students are online in Singapore and Malaysia. We have, as I mentioned, uh, 12, 13, 14 full-time students. Then we have anywhere from 15 to 20 part-time students who take the classes just for the material, for the information that they get. Uh, they don't get graded, they don't take the tests. Uh, but, uh, but all of the brethren at this table are involved in the school effort in Singapore. Now, Eugene is the son, he's the next one there. He's the son of, of Ng Boon and Sue who are sitting to his right, our left. And Ng Boon is one of the elders of the Klang Church of Christ in Malaysia. He's also the preacher for the Chinese congregation there and one of our instructors at Four Seas College Chinese Department. So we had a meal the first night that we were in Singapore and talked about some of the things that we're doing at the school. Main reason for going to Singapore last year was to attend and to participate in the 14th annual Four Seas College Lectureship. It was on the theme, Go Ye Therefore. And so uh, I know you can't read the schedule, but uh, anyway, this is the schedule of the lessons that took place. And, not only were there lessons during the day conducted at the Jerome Church building, but each night there were three gospel meetings being conducted in three different congregations in Singapore. So we had the different speakers involved in gospel meetings in the city so people could choose, uh, the, the visitors could choose the meeting that they wanted to attend and the members worked on uh, getting people there uh, to their prospective congregations for the nighttime gospel meetings. Here are some of the speakers at the lectureship this year. Uh, in uh, the front, some of you know Jennifer, used to be Jennifer Gondorf, uh, Gondorf, Gond Gondos. Gondos, I, I knew I'd get it eventually. Uh, and I forget her married name, what is it? Jennifer Renly. Renly, Renly, yeah, okay. Well, I thought it was Wormley. Wormley. Yeah, Wormley, that's what it is, and anyway. And then uh, Jimmy Lau is next to her on the on the far end. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to omit Anna Chan. Anna is the daughter of David Chu, who used to be the director of Four Seas College many years ago. And her husband is in the back row, one of those Chinese looking guys with glasses. You figure out which one it is. <laughs> no, I'll tell you later. Okay, Jimmy Lau is one of the elders at at the Lee Ma Ping congregation. Next to him is Billy Bland, J.D. Long, Peter Chin. Uh, Amos Chan is one of the elders at Jerome, where we're meeting here for the meeting. Then uh, next to me is uh, one of the, let's see, you remember? Stephanie. That's Stephanie, and that's Ernest, Ernest, Quat, uh, Ernest wife. okay. And she's the wife of the preacher at Lee Ma Ping, and then Poi Fan, the Peter Chin's wife on the far end. And I won't go for all the ones in the back. I don't know all the names, uh, but uh, you can see some of the speakers. Tim Hayes is there. Stan Stockton from Shirts. Um, uh, also, um, Paul. Paul Go is Anna's husband. He's the real thin guy uh, over near the right. Uh, Brother John Dirk Diamante from the Philippines is also there. So this is a number of those who attended and spoke at the lectureship. 
this is a couple on the left that baby has now been born. They have a little baby now. And uh, they are from the Kota Kumanin congregation in Kuala Lumpur. And they came down for the lectureship. Uh, they worship with uh, Andy and uh, Willie Lee there at, uh, Kuala, at uh, Kota Kumanin. On the right is Brother Ng. He's one of the elders at Kota Kumanin. So we have two congregations in Malaysia that have elders and one or two in Singapore now that have elders uh, of the church. Here's uh, Paul Go and Anna and their children. Um, Paul's one of the deacons at uh, the Jerome congregation and uh, they are all very heavily involved in the Lord's work. On the left is <clears throat> Anna and her sister Grace and their mother Abigail. Abigail Chu was the wife of David Chu who passed away uh, last year, year before last, I forget which, and it was good to see them again. Uh, I've known uh, the Chews for uh, about 40 years, somewhere in that neighborhood. Here's uh, Billy Bland, uh, Billy's uh, assistant associate director of the Memphis School of Preaching. He's also uh, been involved with Four Seas College for a number, a number of years. Uh, on his right or left is uh, Su An and her husband Jun Wei. They are members of the Li Ma Ping congregation. And I, I've known uh, Su An, the, the sister on Billy's right, uh, since she was born. I've known her parents uh, for a long time. Uh, here's uh, Jedediah and his wife, Amy, and their four children. Uh, of course, Amy's had, had to learn English because she didn't speak English that well before she came to Singapore. Uh, but uh, they are working primarily with the Chinese congregation and uh, Amy works with the ladies classes as well on the left and the right. Uh, my wife and I are included in the picture on the right. Okay, uh, Russ, what time should I stop? 15, 15, 15 after. Okay. All right, here, here's just some more members who attended the lectureship. You see Grace on the right, that's uh, Brother Chu's daughter. On the right is Brother Amos's wife, one of the elders there. And then the, the lady in the blue by my wife is Brother Ames' wife, Shirley. And the Brother Ames, one of the elders at Kota Kumani. These are some of the ones that attended the lectureship. On the right is Eddie E. Eddie's been a longtime member, preacher in Singapore, a longtime teacher in the English department of Fort College. He's now one of the elders at the Jurong. Uh, he had some major heart issues last couple of years. And he's doing better, uh, but uh, he still has to be very careful with his health. On the right is, um, I mentioned Michael Leong from Malaysia, who uh, was my contact man since 99. This is one of his nieces, and uh, they still call her Mei Mei. The, the name Mei Mei means little sister in Mandarin. And uh, this is her daughter that she has here. And they're living in Singapore and worshiping at Jurong. And I had the privilege to speak at the East Side Church of Christ Gospel Meeting in Singapore. This is a new congregation that started about three years ago. Uh, Lee Ma Ping uh, meets in a, in a converted house. And so it's, it's not that big. They, had, they were having uh, upwards of 180 uh, in their building and it was quite crowded. So they decided to send some of their members out uh, farther away from where they are and started a new congregation. So about 30 members went out and started the East Side Church of Christ. And uh, Brother Alvin Lee, one of the graduates of Four Seas College, is the preacher for that congregation. Here's Alvin and his wife. Is it Marianne? I believe it's Marianne. She's from the Philippines. She came to Four Seas College and they met in Singapore. And so, yeah, I've got her name up there. So just read, read the caption, man, and you'll know who it is. Uh, here are some of the others uh, who were at the meeting. I mentioned in the caption, the kids love my wife wherever we go. They, they just, you know, surround her. And so uh, here are some of the young individuals and a, a young teenage girl from uh, Vietnam in that picture. She was visiting with her husband at the Four Seas College and she didn't speak English. I mean, she didn't speak English. And so she, she did the best she could. She, she smiled a lot, which is what you need to do when you can't speak the language you're trying to talk to. This is another of the members. 
uh, at the East Side congregation, they took us to dinner uh, one night before the time that I spoke there at East Side. I spoke on Saturday morning um, on the topic, hard preparing hard ground. And so that was my topic in regard to the subject of going therefore. On the right is Ulus Nader. Ulus is a um, Singaporean. He was, he's retired military, retired as a colonel in the Singaporean army. And uh, I met Ulus for the first time in 1997 in Australia. He was uh, stationed in Australia at that time and came to the lectureship in Tasmania. And so I met him first there and have had the privilege to see him and meet him through the years. Uh, the Lucas Quek family, they're on the right here. Uh, they took us to dinner one evening uh, for a very nice meal. And uh, Lucas's, uh, Lucas's wife is the daughter of another one of the elders at, at uh, Jerome. Now this is the Chinese congregation that meets at Jerome. They have, two, they have three floors in the building. The ground floor, what we call the first floor, they call the ground floor, is the uh, place where the Chinese congregation meets. The next floor up is the English congregation and some classrooms. Then the third floor is the school. And so the school meets on the top floor of the Jerome building. And so here are a number of those who were in attendance. This is primarily the number that are there uh, on Sunday at the Chinese congregation. Now, Aang Boon, you see him right here in the front. He's there visiting. Uh, but there were not a, a whole lot of visitors here for this particular day. And I had the privilege to speak to them, uh, both in the Bible class and in the worship. Our last day in Singapore. Anybody? You've been to Singapore. Any, anybody else been to Singapore? Uh, if you ever get a chance to go, it's, just, it's worth it just to go see the airport. The airport is one of the most beautiful places. And this is Terminal 3. We're getting ready to go through immigration to get to our flight. And so the whole place is always decorated. Doesn't matter what time of year it is. And uh, they have something now that they've set up. It's like a mall. <clears throat> and then they have a, a constantly going waterfall inside the mall they call the jewel and so you can go there and take pictures and see that kind of thing it's it's, it's really an amazing place uh, some people call singapore the new york of the east and not in the sense that we think about new york today but just the fact that it's so busy and bustling okay well after we finished the lectureship in singapore we went back to indonesia we could not go to taiwan like we would normally do because we uh, were still not able to get in to the country. So we went back to Indonesia and I was able to take part in the annual Taijong lectureship. Uh, this was the, I forget which year this was, uh, that we had, does it say on there? Say again. I know it says the dates, but I'm trying to think of the, the number of the, the lectureship that we had. And uh, so anyway, we had, uh, most of our speakers were on Zoom, and we had speakers from Singapore, uh, and uh, from me from Indonesia, and we had a couple of the speakers were from Taiwan. And so this was a Friday night, Saturday morning and afternoon, and Sunday morning uh, lectureship uh, that, we connected, uh, that we conducted, and it was on the topic of the seven churches of Asia. So that was the topic for this lectureship. And you can see it there in the middle, that's what that says. Uh, writing letters to the seven churches of Asia. <coughs> we, for the first time, we did the lectureship on Zoom. Now in Taiwan, they use something called LINE, L-I-N-E. And it's a little bit different than Zoom. And personally, I don't like it as well. You can't do as much with it. So this year, Brother Yo, who's the preacher there, agreed to work on doing it in Zoom. And the school, Four Seas College, provided the Zoom account so that we could do it. So where we normally have 40 people who would attend the lectureship, this year we had over 100 who were able to tune in because of Zoom. And many of them were from mainland China. 
And so again, we were thankful. And again, I took a picture with all the windows closed <laughs> because when I show this picture out in public somewhere, I don't want to put anybody's uh, life in jeopardy. Now, these are some of the pictures uh, from, uh, this is, these are pictures from the normal Taiwan worship. You see the second window from the left at the top, that's Brother Yo, he's the local preacher. And then if you, uh, this is during the this is during the class of worship, so we don't have others in it. So with some of these others then have their windows closed, uh, and they just put a picture up uh, when they're when they're meeting uh, in the in the class. But this is a weekly class and worship that we have in Taichung, other than the lectureship. Now this is a picture of the ten full time students I had in my last class, and you see here the midterm grades. Uh, that uh, I had in the, the final the final test and their final grade, I think I ended up, two students had uh, scores in the 70s. All the rest scores were in the 80s, 90s, or even a few uh, went to 100. And so uh, we have some very diligent students and some say uh, an easy teacher that gives easy tests. <laughs> and I don't know if that's the case or not, but anyway, uh, again, speaking at uh, the Indivo class, this is December 21st, uh, speaking on the purpose of Jesus' coming. Then speaking on, uh, this, is, this is not me speaking, but I will serve as the, the coordinator for the Q&A. This was the last, I believe the last Sunday in, or the last Wednesday in December. We have a, a topic, a theme, and we had two short lessons that were conducted by to the members in Malaysia, and then Q&A. This is the Jakarta International Airport. Uh, this is the uh, near the land, the place where you go into immigration. We were getting ready to come back to the States, and this was in January. And we had a kind of a glitch in our travel. I don't know if it was Delta's fault or my fault, but anyway, you cut it, we got to Korea 24 hours ahead of time. So we were in Korea 24 hours before we were supposed to be there. Delta Airlines was very kind. They took care of us. They took us to the transit hotel. They gave us coupons for the, the transit lounge where we were able to eat three meals while we were there. Uh, this is part of the uh, Seoul Incheon Airport. This is the transit lounge in uh, in that airport, this is the transit hotel where we spent one night or two nights? One night. Yeah, just one night there. And uh, then we had a, a little glitch leaving Seoul because of uh, mechanical problems. And we flew into Minneapolis for our transit flight to San Antonio. And we missed our flight to San Antonio because we got into to, uh, Minneapolis late. It just so happened two days before, they had 18 inches of snow in Minneapolis. And so again, Delta Airlines put us up in a hotel and they said, you get to choose the hotel you want to stay in. So uh, I asked the recommendation of the Delta agent there. And he said, I'd stay there if I were you because that's connected to the Mall of America. So we stayed in a hotel connected to the Mall of America. And the next day we had some time the next day, we went outside and Etta got to see snow in person for the first time. She'd never seen snow before. And so they had nice big piles of snow outside the mall and we weren't dressed for it. I told her, you can stay out here as long as you want. I'm going back in because we didn't have to close. It was, uh, I think it was 14 degrees uh, when we went outside. And so. Anyway, we had come from Indonesia where it was 90 degrees. And, and we had expected not to have to lay over in, in Minneapolis. But anyway, she got to see snow, be able to pick it up and hold it. And so she enjoyed that part of it. Okay, uh, this is something that's coming up in June of this year. We're going back to Indonesia the first week in April. Uh, and we'll be there and I'll be working, doing my classes in preparation uh, online. But then in May, 
somewhere around the 19th, we're going to be traveling back to Malaysia again and working with some different congregations in uh, that particular place. But then we're also going to be participating in the annual Chinese Asian Bible Lectureship. This is 12 to 14 speakers. This is the 15th year for this lectureship. <laughs> now for the last two years, we haven't been able to have it. We didn't have it online, we just didn't have it. And so finally, uh, we were able to have it this year. And so we're going to be meeting in a resort outside of uh, Kuala Lumpur. And we'll be there for three days before we come back to Indonesia around the 11th of June. How can you help? Well, we always solicit the prayers of our brethren for the work that we're doing. Uh, we get one-time congregation of contributions like we get from Ulagai every year. Uh, we get regular monthly contributions from a number of congregations and brethren around the states to help keep our work going. These are things that can be done. And also to tell others about our work. There's so much work that needs to be done everywhere in the world. And we can't go and do everything everywhere. You know, we've got somebody who can who can go to Ukraine, for example, and work among the Ukrainian brethren and the Ukrainian people. We've got people who can go to Africa and they can work among the various African brethren there. We've got brethren who can go to, to Latin America, who can go to Mexico and Central and South America and work among the churches and the brethren there. And we have some that are also working among Chinese and Asian brethren. And so we do what we can where we are with what we have. And we appreciate the prayers and the encouragement and the contributions that help us continue our work. Now these are some useful websites. I got OABS on there and I didn't just put that on there because I was coming to Ulaga. I want you to know that. It's on there all the time. Uh, Shirts, the Shirts Church uh, live streams their worship on Sunday. Sunday morning, Sunday night through OABS, and we appreciate OABS making that possible. Uh, WVBS, I've done a lot of work. When I do a general overview of the work that I've done over the last 42 years, I'll talk about the work that I did at World Video Bible School because I, I did about 180 uh, Chinese videos, and uh, I did about 85 to 100 English videos that I did there. I'm not doing much there right now because they have a, a full-time worker in Chinese that's doing the work. A GBN TV, this is a 24-hour day a television station, and you might see me on there once in a while. Some of my English videos have been sent there. IBT Ministries is, uh, is um, uh, I was going to say his name, and then Chuck Northrup name came into my mind. Uh, Ron Gilbert. So Ron Gilbert is involved with the IBT Ministries, and uh, Ron does a lot of the work of his work in uh, Zambia and Malawi, and they have the old Proof of the World uh, Bible Correspondence Courses there uh, that you can access online and teach people in that way. And then, as I mentioned, OABS. And then if you want to access uh, my mission reports back to about, I think, 2009, you can go on my blog, revolutionwork.blogspot.com, and you can read about the things that we're doing. <coughs> and this is where contributions are sent. Okay, that's the last slide. So we have we have a minute, but if you have a quick question, I'll try to give a quick answer. Who might have a question that they'd like to ask? What question do you have? Yes. The, when you have new converts, yes. do, are they are they normally people who don't know anything about God, or they maybe denominations? Well, you know, if they're a new convert, I hope they know something about yeah. God. <laughs> you know, I hope we've taught them a little bit so that they know something about God. But it depends on it depends on where they've come from. For example, in Taiwan, they may have come from a Eastern religion background, Buddhism, Taoism. Confucianism. Or it may be they have been uh, in some particular denomination. And so they have that denominational background. Uh, sometimes the denominational churches in that work among the Chinese will say, listen, you want to keep worshiping your idols and your ancestors? That's okay, go ahead. 
And so they'll, they'll incorporate that into their uh, denominational life. So, so sometimes you have to deal with that. Now, mainland China, uh, you know, they, because of communism, they tried to completely eradicate, or not completely eradicate, but eradicate uh, Buddhism. And so what we, are, what we are normally dealing with in mainland China is we're dealing with people who um, are coming from a denominational background. And so we're, we're working with those who have come from a denominational background. Okay, further follow up on that one? Okay. I didn't get to show you, I, it's on the other presentation that I did. I have uh, the English and the Chinese on the screen at the same time. What I do when I'm teaching at Forces College now in the Chinese department, I am putting the, the PowerPoints are in bi bilingual. They're both in English and Chinese. And the reason I do that is for two reasons. Number one, you know, my first language is English. <laughs> and so I can look, I can look at an English sentence and I can translate it in my mind a lot quicker than I can read Chinese. And so that's one reason I do it. Number two, there are a number of Chinese people, Chinese speaking people in Southeast Asia, especially Singapore and Malaysia, who speak Chinese, but they do not read and write it. And so you, if you speak it, they understand it. But if they look at it, they cannot read and write it. They cannot read it. And so I put the English on the screen so that they have the opportunity to be able to read the English and to understand what we're talking about in that particular place. And so it takes me a long time to prepare the material that I teach for my classes. Again, because it's online, it needs to be on PowerPoint. It doesn't have to be, but it needs to be on PowerPoint. And it takes me a long time to put all of that, both in English and Chinese, on the screen. Because normally I have to translate the English into the Chinese to make it available uh, for the, the brethren that I'm teaching. Okay, other questions or comments? Okay, well, I'll be here tonight as well. And so if you make me think of a question tonight, uh, I'm not teaching tonight, but I'm not speaking tonight, but I'll be here. And so if you think of a question that you'd like to ask, then you can, uh, you can ask me this evening, and I'll be happy to answer your question. Thank you so much for your, your uh, attention, and we appreciate the opportunity to be able to be here today and make this presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.